So uh, just to start with some housekeeping issues, uh, I will record this. So if you have to step away or you miss something, don't worry, uh, I'll send you the recording afterwards. Uh, for folks who join a bit late, I, you know, you can watch the whole thing. I will uh, record it and send it through. So this is, welcome to my, what is today? My 44th Travel Tuesday that I've started since uh, the world shut down. And while my colleagues in the States are starting to travel again, uh, those of us in Canada, especially Ontario, although other provinces too, uh, we're in lockdown right now. So we're still dreaming about travel and can't wait to start again. I have uh, Gustavo here, who's with Vox, is up to the name of the company? You're the account yes. manager for Costa Rica? Yes. With the Costa Rica Tourism in Canada. So uh, just to give you folks a little overview of upcoming presentations, um, I have Remote Lands is going to do a Japan presentation towards the end of May. And I also have Visit Finland, who's going to do a presentation about Finland at the beginning of June. Recent, uh, last week, I did Auberge Saint Antoine, a hotel in Quebec City, and uh, Windstar Cruises and Wilderness Safaris were the most recent presentations. Also do some travel trivia. We do them once a month, but it's just fun to have a travel Tuesday and connect with people. And I hope you enjoy the presentation. Gustavo, thank you so much for joining us. I do have it on share if you're ready to uh, take over the screen. Sure. Thank you very much, Sheila. Hola, amigos. My name is Gustavo. And today I want to share with you what makes Costa Rica a most sea destination. So I have some slides for you, just so you can enjoy some, some beautiful images of Costa Rica. Okay, let's start here. So today we're going to talk about just 10 reasons to visit Costa Rica. There are plenty of reasons to visit Costa Rica, but these are, in my opinion, the best ones. As you know, thousands of Canadians travelers have made Costa Rica their top travel destination for many reasons. Most of them is because you can enjoy tropical beaches, their grand adventures, the wonders of nature, and the beautiful culture. These are all the necessary components that everyone needs to have a, a great vacation or a holiday. But the opportunities of adventure, relaxation, and exploration in Costa Rica are unlimited. Uh, this is what makes Costa Rica one of the most visit international destinations in Central America. And let's start talking about sun and beaches. This is the reason number one. Costa Rica is blessed by Mother Nature. Most visitors are able to be surrounded by beautiful beaches in every one of their trips. Uh, we have beautiful, spectacular waterfalls. The country occupies a, a privileged spot uh, with beaches in the Caribbean Sea and then on the other side in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, you can enjoy whale watching, dolphin watching, sport fishing, surfing, diving, snorkeling. Um, Costa Rica has more of 1,300 kilometers of coastline. That's a lot of beaches for you. <laughs> the country offers the ability to access beaches at Punta Arena, which is only 90 minutes from the capital, San Jose. And both coastlines are separated by only three hours car drive. So you can actually visit one part of the country and go to the other shore uh, on the same day, if you prefer to do so. And as I was telling you, there's so many uh, water activities that you can do in Costa Rica that I highly recommend. Uh, some of them could be very high impact adventure. You can do some kite surfing, for example, uh, for those who are very energetic and active. Or you can just lay down and do some uh, standing up um, paddle uh, boarding, or you can just do some kayaking, or you can just relax at the beach next to your margarita drink, which is one of the best adventure activities that you can do. Uh, let's talk about reason number two, nature and wildlife. Costa Rica is the mecca of wildlife and biodiversity. It is home for more than 95,000 
species of animals. It, this is about it's a representation of about 5% of all known species in the entire world. And they are in Costa Rica. They are 44 biological corridors in Costa Rica and plenty of opportunities to interact with wildlife and animals. There are five, almost half a million of flora and fauna species in the entire country. Uh, the 6% of these species from the entire world. So Costa Rica, it's beautiful to see nature, of course, and animals, and it's a bird lover's paradise. There are more than 900 different bird species in the entire country. So you will be able to see uh, capuchin monkeys, turtles, howlers, spider monkeys, jaguar, reptiles, turtles, whales, and of course, the most popular ones, which are the sloths, um, which by the way, most people don't know this before traveling to Costa Rica. They all, they're always very high in the trees, so it's very difficult for you to actually see them. Most travelers go to Costa Rica thinking they're actually going to see sloth, that they're going to be very nearby them. Uh, most of the times you need uh, very special lenses and cameras to actually see them, telescope uh, to actually see them. The only way to see them are very close and, and is to go to one of the sanctuaries where you will be able to, to see them closely. Let's talk about reason number three, which is adventure. The country unique landscape create different adventures for uh, thrill seekers to explore. Uh, for example, you can do zip lining, hiking, hiking in the rainforest or surfing, whale watching. Uh, in Costa Rica, you will find once in a lifetime experiences and exceptional opportunities for incredible adventures. The country is an adventure traveler's heaven. Costa Rica has mountains, flowing rivers, unspoiled rainforests, active volcanoes, and all of these uh, magnificent wonders of nature provide the ideal playground for millions of, of travelers uh, that would like to go and visit Costa Rica. Um, the diverse natural landscape of the country, uh, it, it's a beautiful stage from coast to coast, and it's action packed. So you will find as many adventures as you want, hiking, zip lining, mountain biking, trekking, um, surfing, swimming, diving, all of that you will be able to do in, in, at, at some point in, in many places in Costa Rica. But you will also find many opportunities to enjoy thrilling and adventure experiences such as rappelling and, and kayoning, which is uh, very popular these days, but also softer adventures horseback riding, bird watching, um, just having some walks in some of the national parks, which in my opinion is one of the best experiences. Um, and you will not be that tired because um, I'm one of those travelers that, yes, I do enjoy a little bit of adventure, but um, I don't enjoy it all the time. <laughs> I want to have time to relax, to enjoy the air, to breathe and, and enjoy the scenery for sure. Let's talk about gastronomy. The food in Costa Rica is wonderful. Uh, Costa Rica cuisine offers uh, many different choices, tasty and hearty meals that are made with locally grown ingredients uh, from zero artificial um, ingredients, which is something that I, I really enjoy in Costa Rica. Uh, most of the popular dishes, of course, they have fruits and vegetables, bananas, mangoes, papayas, cacao, and of course, coffee beans. By law, Costa Rica only produces the highest quality of coffee beans in the entire country. Uh, they use the Arabica variety, uh, which is known for a very strong aroma and delightful taste. Uh, I usually tell people here in Canada that uh, chances are that the coffee that you're having in, uh, at your favorite coffee place comes from Costa Rica, because uh, we produce a lot of coffee for international countries. Costa Rica is one of the largest coffee producers in the entire world. Uh, you can enjoy an energizing brew experience and learn more about the aspects of the productions of coffee, of roasting and packaging the bean in one of the country's many coffee farms, which is an experience that I highly recommend for you to, uh, to enjoy while you're in Costa Rica. Some of the most popular dishes in Costa Rica are made of freshly caught seafood, uh, but of course, uh, some other dishes include organic and authentic seasonal produce. Uh, the typical dish is called gallo pinto, 
which is a combination of beans and rice. But each region in Costa Rica, even though it, when, once you're there, you will notice that it's, it's just kind of a small country, you will know that every, reach, every region in Costa Rica has an amazing culinary experience and, and it's shaped by the environment and the people in the area. Um, so now that I see this, I'm super hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Let's move to luxury and wellness. Uh, this is something that Costa Rica is very known for. Well, let me tell you something. Did you guys know that the World Health Organization considers stress a global epidemic? And the World Economic Forum believes it to be one of the most costly chronic diseases in medical care these days. Well, I have a cure for that. Listen to me, Costa Rica will guarantee to reduce your stress. <laughs> I'm not a doctor, but I can assure you <laughs> Costa Rica will help you with that. Well-being is more than just happiness. Well-being is, is this feeling, uh, this satisfaction. Uh, Well-being means developing as a person, being fulfilled with yourself, um, and of course, contributing to the communities around you. The Costa Rica lifestyle provides an ideal sanctuary for you to uh, re-energize, to enjoy the people, the culture, which has, in my opinion, they have created this way of life that is founded in the ideas of community, of health and wellness. So visitors are encouraged to completely immerse themselves in the culture and learn about the lifestyle of the locals. And this way of life promotes the sales of well-being, of course, um, as well as the opportunity to you get the chance to detoxify uh, from everything. You get the chance to renew your body, your mind, your soul. Um, the lifestyle that you will have in Costa Rica when it comes to wellness is apparent the second you walk in, into, the second you walk out of, out of the airport, you will realize that Costa Rica is, is one of these countries that makes you feel calm right away. Um, you will release of your stress the second you arrive in Costa Rica and it's because the smiling faces that you will see, the, the welcoming demeanor of the locals and the reflection of what we call the Pura Vida, the style DNA. Um, and this is something that has been always part of Costa Rica and, and it will always be. Costa Rica is recognized widely as one of the longest um, wellness uh, places in the world. And attached to the wellness factor is actually the ecotourism factor. So I would like to talk to you now about something that many people think is popular these days, which is sustainable tourism. But let me tell you, sustainable tourism is not a trend. It's not something that is just popular. Sustainable tourism is, is a transformation of the world. It's something that we should all be in, embracing. Um, Costa Rica, it's, uh, uh, in my opinion, one of the leading countries, uh, not just in wellness and yoga, but also in ecotourism, um, having put in practice decades of net zero progress, including electrical grids and, and emission free, gas emission free uh, um, companies, and uh, the deforestation rates are very, very low. So at some point, Costa Rica decided to go full on. Uh, net zero. So they have announced, they, they launched a national uh, plan to be net zero. Uh, the plan has a few stages, of course, uh, and the goal is to achieve complete um, decarbonization by the year 2050, which is um, a goal that many other countries have, have put in place too. Uh, I highly suggest you when you go to Costa Rica to enjoy the outdoors, to breathe the air, uh, and to get in contact with nature because it's one of the best features of Costa Rica, as you can see in these beautiful images. Uh, Costa Rica is so green, it, there's water everywhere. Um, it's a beautiful place to be surrounded by nature. Of course, one of the other reasons is the culture of Costa Rica. We are the country of Pura Vida, which means literally pure life. Uh, Costa Rica is multicultural, multi-ethnic, um, 
it's multi-bilingual too. Most of the population descend from a cultural fusion of immigration, uh, immigrants, of course, from Africa, from China, from the Lebanese, from Europeans, and of course, the indigenous people um, that are embedded in the culture of Costa Rica. So from the stone spheres um, in Costa Rica, the Guayabo National Ar Ar Archaeological uh, Monument, uh, Costa Rica offer many historic and cultural experience. Um, there's national prize offerings, um, like this beautiful theater in the capital. Uh, so in Costa Rica, you, yes, you will be able to be outdoors and, and enjoy uh, the scenery and the beauty of nature, but at the same time, you will be able to explore the culture of Costa Rica. Uh, some of the cultural traditions include um, Creole swing dancing, which I highly recommend you to do, uh, Limon Calypso, which is also another traditional dance, and of course, um, the traditional Chorotega ceramics, which was in one of the previous photos, uh, which is a beautiful artwork. So as a visitor, you will be able to dis discover many locally grown ingredients and farmer markets and experience everything from home cooking to modern dining in, in Costa Rica. Uh, and you will be able to see many national parks and, and national monuments, of course. Now let's talk about the Pura Vida lifestyle. As I was mentioning you before, uh, Pura Vida is a colloquial uh, phrase that translates to pure life, but it means much more than that. Uh, it's a, a lifestyle in which you choose to live to the fullest. Uh, you nurture your mind, your body, your soul. Just the phrase Pura Vida can be, can be heard all around the country and, and it's a, an expression of greetings. Most people will say to you, Pura Vida, instead of saying hello or saying goodbye. It's, it's an expression um, that in, in, in just these two words express and describe the tranquility, the wonder and the adventure that Costa Rica offers. And no matter what region you choose to visit, um, one of Costa Rica 27 national parks will be waiting for you to visit. 26% um, of the country is officially a protected territory. So most of the land that you will see around you is protected and, and it's beautiful to visit. You will not be in places surrounded by, um, by a lot of people when you are in these uh, beautiful scenarios. Uh, you will be able to, to enjoy um, all this nature around you because Costa Rica provides a sanctuary for energizing, for uh, just enjoy uh, the practices of, of yoga in personal care. You can also participate in activities like um, just having a, a massage in beautiful, lush, natural environments or, or visiting Costa Rica Adventure um, uh, National Parks, which you can just do walking, by the way. Um, to me, one of the best things about Costa Rica is that you will be able to visit national parks at any time and you will be able to enjoy the nature of Costa Rica just by walking by. Uh, for us living in Canada, uh, being in this beautiful tropical weather is it's just amazing. Another reason is the welcoming people of Costa Rica. Costa Ricans, as we call it, ticos or ticas, uh, they're generous, they're kind, they're humble, they are always smiling. They're always willing to help you, uh, always willing to help tourists for sure. Um, the best way to describe um, a, a tico, a, a, people from Costa, from a, a person from Costa Rica is, is just very nice and friendly, to be honest with you. A tico is easily the most amazing person that you will have the pleasure of meeting. They have a very uh, carefree outlook for life. Um, which is guided by this pure Pura Vida, Pura Vida style. And, and as you know, Atiko will know good food, good coffee, will know how to dance, and we'll show you how to party for sure. <laughs> um, but most of them are able to speak English fluently, and they're smart, they're charming, and, and they're very funny. So I highly encourage you to uh, get in touch with the locals while you're in the destinations and and don't be afraid of, of um, not being able to speak Spanish with them because most of them, they will be able to understand you and they will always have a big smile for you. 
And this is the last reason to visit Costa Rica, um, which is Costa Rica is a year around tropical destination. The weather in Costa Rica doesn't follow the two main seasons that are in Central America, which is, you know, a little bit of sun, a little bit of winter. Costa Rica is a year around tropical destination. So no matter what season or what region you are decided to visit, there is always something exciting to discover. For those willing to, walk, to go off the beaten path in Costa Rica, the rewards will be endless, let me tell you. Uh, but make sure to bring a raincoat or a poncho because chances are you're gonna need it at some point. But don't worry, um, even though it usually rains in Costa Rica, it's a warm and lovely rain. Uh, we call it liquid sunshine because it's not actually cold rain. And it might pour for about a few minutes and then it's gone right away and you can continue your trip for sure. And well, these are some of the reasons to visit Costa Rica. But of course, I highly recommend you to contact Sheila at any point if you are thinking about visiting Costa Rica and to start planning because in Costa Rica, you will have many opportunities to, to do anything that you like for sure. If you are into wellness, if you are into luxury, if you are into adventure, um, if you're a family, if you're a couple, if you're a single traveler, we have experiences for all of you and, and we hope to, to see you here in Costa Rica at some point. <laughs> uh, hopefully, uh, once things get better and when the time is right, you will be able to visit us. So keep Costa Rica in mind. Um, now I'm gonna play a video. I don't think you guys will be able to hear it. We were trying in the beginning and the sound was not so good, but it will give you a few images of Costa Rica. This is a video that we produced to let everyone know that Costa Rica is there. We actually were able to travel right now to Costa Rica. Um, the, requires, the requirements are minimum. Uh, you don't need to have a, a proof of um, negative test COVID-19 or proof of vaccination. Uh, the only thing that you need is to provide is um, information about your travel insurance and some basic information about, you know, um, you, you need to provide a little bit of, fill up a form with some information of where you're coming from and how long have you been in the country, all of that. But it's one of those beautiful destinations that are available for us right now. But as you know, unfortunately, uh, Canadians, we, we are living in this epidemic and, and the situation in Canada is, is not that good as we hope for, but it will be at some point and we will be able to travel back and forth to Costa Rica um, for many, many years to come. So when you think about your next trip to Costa Rica, I want you to remember all the beautiful experiences that I just told you about, uh, but keep in mind that for sure you will enjoy nature, wildlife, and wellness when you travel to Costa Rica. Thank you, Gustavo. I uh, just wanted to say to people that today is May the 4th. So yes. may the force be with us. Uh, the the uh, technology issues got fixed and the Star Wars theme there. So sorry, we had a little rough start, but uh, thrilled that you were able to come back on and, and we were able to get through it without glitches. If folks didn't hear the audio, I will get a copy of the video from Gustavo and uh, share that with you all. Um, and we'll open it up for questions, but I just wanna mention, uh, you talked about Pura Vida and stress and uh, living life to the fullest. You know, We've lived through a year of total stress with the pandemic. There's just been this phrase that's been kicking around the travel industry uh, for the past year called revenge travel. Yes. So if you want to get back at the virus, uh, you know, live your best travel life and plan a, a vacation that's going to give you that pure vita and live life to the fullest. So I, I just uh, thank you, Gustavo. Does anyone have any questions uh, while we have the expert here with us? Go ahead, Joan. I think you're on mute. Yes. I think you're still on. Yeah. Okay. No, but, I can hear you, Joan. Okay, yeah. so I want to know, Sheila, when are you taking this group to Costa Rica? 
<laughs> you want to go, do you? Uh, we're do today's uh, session was, wasn't was about a specific group that I'm doing, although I can put uh, one together. Um, I do have some other groups that I have planned and, and have formalized trips, but today it was just more educational purposes. But if uh, there are interest, there is interest in, in joining a group, please let me know and we can put that together. Okay, yep. it's only because I know Costa Rica is not far from us, and it's a short little hop, and for somebody that's just starting to do traveling expeditions, I know that you're one of the best persons to go with because you're very, very in touch with your people. You, are, you have a heart, and um, I see it, and so when I want to travel, I'm going to travel, and I'm going to choose to travel with you. Well, thank you, Joan. I really appreciate appreciate that. You know, it's it's been a difficult year on us all, and I found these Travel Tuesdays that I've been doing with with you folks has really kept me in touch and hopefully helped us all still dream and plan about travel. So, thank you. I really appreciate that. Okay. Thank you very much, Joan, and, and we cannot wait to see you in Costa Rica. And just as you <laughs> mentioned, yeah, it's it's just a, a one flight. If you are um, departing from Toronto, for example, it's just a, a direct flight. And if you're departing from another, right now, from another destination in Canada, um, we will have flights for you, a quick connection. Uh, but Costa Rica is, is one of those quick spots that you can just go and relax and, and feel surrounded by nature and enjoy it for sure. Gustavo, we have a question from Louise. How is Costa Rica handling the pandemic and is the lack of restriction concerning, um, certainly I guess in, in result of uh, how Canada has been handling the pandemic versus our neighbors to the South? It's very difficult to uh, compare both countries because um, as you know, Costa Rica is a small country. The population is, is relatively small compared to Canada. Um, they have been handling the situation very well. And this is why they were able to open their borders to tourists many months ago, actually, Costa Rica has been open for a while. Um, and it's because we believe that our tourism, our ecotourism allows people to be outdoor, to feel very safe and free. Uh, even though we have a lot of um, restrictions in place, not just for locals, but for tourists. So right now, when you go to Costa Rica, you have to wear your mask, you have to clean your hands and use your hand sanitizer like everybody else. The main difference is uh, in the space that you will be, will be very free and open. Uh, and we have this vast space. So people will, will not feel trapped in, in a place. They will be able at some point um, to enjoy nature. The situation in Costa Rica, when it comes to COVID-19 and, and with numbers, as you know, have been changing every day. Um, I think the country has been doing a great job with that. And hopefully, just like here in Canada, they will be able to revamp the vaccination process. And at some point, uh, tourism will have a big comeback. We have actually seen a lot of tourists going to Costa Rica during the, the past months and enjoying their stay. Uh, but please make sure to remember that you do have to adhere to some uh, restrictions while when you are in Costa Rica, for example, as just as here in Canada, some restaurants are not open all the time. They have reduced hours. The, um, there's a limit of people in certain restaurants or, or places. So um, to me, the best part is that when you go to Costa Rica and you book, for example, an eco lodge in the middle of a national park, you will be able to have this beautiful green scenery that you can see in my backdrop um, and enjoy it. Thank you. We have a Perry. I think you had raised your hand. If you can unmute. There you go. Go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, well, I had a, quite a similar question about COVID. What's the situation? Uh, COVID situation. What are the numbers in Costa Rica? How many cases? Affected cases. And also if there's no vaccination or uh, negative test, COVID test required, how can they uh, contain, like if there are you know, people who have the COVID, how, how, how do they contain the, uh, and, and you know, yes. try to protect the people? Well, we have a lot of uh, measures in place to protect the locals and also the tourists. Um, we were able to open the country because as I was telling you, the, 
the number of the population is very different from other places. And the way that people live is very different because they are not in concentrated areas like most of us live in Canada, where we have buildings all around us. And they have uh, bigger spaces. Um, there are a lot of restrictions in, in Costa Rica and they have been working uh, with the health um, minister and, and with everyone in the, in the government to try to keep everyone safe. Uh, we were able to open the country uh, following all the procedures that were advised by the, the Costa Rica government. Uh, to be honest with you, I think they have been doing a great job uh, with the pandemic. I don't, I don't think you should be afraid to go to Costa Rica just because you don't have to um, present a proof of vaccination or a proof of negative tests upon arrival. Oh, you, you don't have to do it right now at the moment. Um, there have been some conversation about the vaccine passport all around the world. And I do believe that at some point, uh, many countries will join this initiative. And, but um, right now, I don't have the exact number of cases. That number changes every day. Yeah, um, and I can share that after, as well as the entry requirements for the different countries. Uh, one of the things we've learned in, in surviving this COVID mess uh, is that the rules change every five minutes. So <laughs> Gustavo and I have certainly seen that with, uh, with the government advisories. Um, you know, we will see uh, vaccine passports or the equivalent seems to be something that might be taking hold. And for those of you who've traveled to different parts of the world before, you know that uh, it's not uncommon to have a, a yellow fever vaccine or a malaria vaccine and having proof of that. So that may be where we're headed. Different countries, different cruise lines are all developing rules and that will continue to evolve. And we'll, we'll keep you up to date as best as possible. Uh, someone, Karen, you had a question about a good length of time to holiday in Costa Rica. You can actually right now apply for one of the jobs, <laughs> um, the job permits or one of the long stay vacations. So you can actually work from Costa Rica. We have seen a lot of tourists right now from Canada that actually, because of the pandemic, most of us are working from home. They decided to go to Costa Rica for months and work from there. <laughs> uh, we, we saw a lot of that, but I suggest to visit Costa Rica, you need at least seven days. That's six, nine, seven days, including trip. You find that most people tend to go to the, the rainforest or maybe the volcano and then sometime on the beach? Yes. We see that most people, the first option that most Canadians are, are trying is actually going to the beach. Um, I guess we're all craving a little bit of water and sunshine for sure. I highly suggest you to go to the center of the country, which is where most of the national parks are. But when I mean the center, it doesn't mean a long trip. As I told you, there's three hour drive from this part of the country to the other one. So you can actually drive around the country and it's something that I highly recommend you guys to do. Um, the roads are very well, well made, signage is perfect, you will be able to, uh, to get your own car, you will not get lost uh, if you want to do it on your own or you can go on a group or, or have a, a tour guide for sure. But I highly recommend you to, to go to the national parks and I also highly recommend, this is one of my favorite destinations in Costa Rica, is the national park called Tortuguero. Tortuguero is this beautiful place, and the best way I can describe it is uh, there are beautiful eco lodges in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> um, it, there is not a city, it's not a place. Uh, there are no cars because the only way to get there is actually by a river. So you actually take a little plane, a very small plane, uh, from one area in Costa Rica and land into the national park and then take a little boat that will take you right away into your ecologist and you can spend one two days there and enjoy a lot of beautiful nature you could be in one of those uh, images that i show you in my presentation one of these kind of bungalow style places surrounded by beautiful trees and and you will wake up to the sound of the monkeys in the morning um it, it's the it's being and living in this beautiful rainforest. I highly recommend that place. It's called Tortuguero National Park. Perfect. 
Um, we had a question from Monica asking if you could speak a bit about the different types of accommodations and going on a tour versus staying at a resort. It depends on what you want to do. We have all types of accommodations. We have um, from Airbnb style places to very high end five star, six star luxury places. Um, Costa Rica is, is very famous right now, for example, for being uh, very popular among celebrities for some reason. <laughs> so we have a, that high level of clientele that comes to Costa Rica and enjoy places. Uh, but at the same time, you don't need to spend a lot of money to go to Costa Rica. There are many other options for you. I will not suggest you to go to Costa Rica and stay in a hotel for all the time. Um, so if you're thinking about just spending an entire week in a hotel sipping margaritas, I'll suggest you to just get out of the hotel and go and enjoy the scenery. Costa Rica is, is a place for nature. So I don't want you to be stuck in a hotel room. And after all this pandemic, none of us want to be stuck in a hotel room. We're all craving nature outdoors. We want to be outdoors. And Costa Rica is the perfect place for that. So I highly recommend you um, to... As I told you, it, it seems like a big country, but it's not. I highly recommend you to book, for example, two days in, in one place, two days in a different place, and maybe three days um, in a different area. And you will be able to just drive, walk around and drive around the country and see many different areas uh, that for sure you will have a, a better experience, a more comprehensive experience of all Costa Rica. Uh, when it comes to accommodation, Sheila will be able to give you a, a better guide of, of all the places that are in Costa Rica, but you can go, you can rent your own place if you want to feel safe, for example. If you're traveling with your family and, and you don't want to be in a group, great. Um, Sheila will be able to do that for you. Or if you want to be in a group, which I, I also highly recommend, um, because I work with groups all the time. I'm the host of, of many fan tours where I take travel agents with me to visit uh, Costa Rica and at the end of the trip we all became not just not just friends we became some kind of family so there, there are many benefits of being in a group um, from the fact that that the price will be lower just because you're in a, in a group group to the fact that you will meet other people and you will have all the interactions so you actually will be able to enjoy um, the the attractions in a different way that you are not used to because you're living them through the eyes of somebody else so I highly recommend you to visit Costa Rica the way you want it. <laughs> we can and have all of that was, for you. you know, you talked a bit about sustainability um, and sustainable tourism is a huge interest of mine. Um, and I, I love that you were saying it's not a trend in Costa Rica because of all the greenery and the emphasis on nature. It's really been a way of life. And that tends to be a, a, a focus, at least of the clients I've sent, they, they want to stay in a lodge, they want to stay in nature, uh, rather than a brand hotel that, you know, you might stay in in Ottawa. They, they exist, you have some of them too. But uh, what's really neat is if you're immersing yourself in nature and wellness to stay in a, an authentic spot and you, you showed some pictures of some of the different kinds of accommodations. There's different possible. kinds of accommodations, of course, as I was describing you, uh, the best is the best way that I can describe this ecology is it's a Canadian cabin in the woods, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> but nobody um, around. <laughs> nobody around, and, and it's not cold at all, and you're surrounded by beautiful monkeys. <laughs> yeah. Some of those pictures were beautiful, and they look like BC, right? I mean, some of the greenery, a little bit more tropical, but it, it looked more like uh, British Columbia than, uh, you know. And of course, just because I'm, I'm, I mentioned the word cabin, you will think, oh, I don't want to be in a rustic place. Oh, no, no, no. These places are magnificent inside. <laughs> so you can have all the luxuries that you will enjoy in many other destinations around the world that might not have that luxury brand. Um, but you will be able to enjoy that in the middle of this beautiful nature, for sure. But yet and, there are and, luxury options if that's how you prefer to travel as well. Like the... Is it Pacure uh, Lodge, the uh, the five-star? Yes. Yeah. Which there, are, there are many, many 
brands and many hotels and accommodations that you will be able to find. But indeed, sustainable tourism in Costa Rica is not a trend. Um, this is not something that we put in our marketing um, program just because it sounds cool. Um, we're not trying <laughs> to make everyone think, uh, oh, this is what we're doing to make us look good. No, this is embedded in the DNA of the culture of the country for many, many years. Um, Tourism is very important to Costa Rica, not just financially, but culturally, most, most of people depend on tourism um, to have jobs, to, to develop the communities, to, to just thrive as, 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 um, as a population. So they take into consideration every aspect to take care of what they have because the they main goal is to maintain it. So their future generations are able to enjoy it just like we do. And there are many things that you can do uh, to be um, a mindful travel. Most people think, oh, I just need to stop using, you know, this plastic bottle of water and I need to take one with you. Yeah, that's one of the things that you could do when you're in Costa Rica for sure. But there are other places that you can do. For example, uh, we have a program where you can pay to offset your uh, carbon footprint before going into Costa Rica. Uh, so you pay around 10% of what your flight's price will be. And it, that money that you are um, paying is, goes to many other organizations that take care of um, sustainable initiatives in Costa Rica. Other thing that you can do is you can actually volunteer um, and, and do some beach cleaning or work in one of the national parks for a few hours. Or my favorite, if you can, um, you can just go and plant a tree, which is something very easy, very fast. Um, and there are many places where you will be able to enjoy an experience where you go to a national park and they teach you all about the flora and the fauna. And at the end, you will be able to just plant a tree. But there are many things that you are able to do to be a more mindful traveler. You just, in my opinion, just need to uh, open your mind to a different way of, of traveling and uh, make sure to get in contact with the locals because to um, responsible tourism and it's not just about the nature and the animals it also has a lot of impact on the local communities this is why when when you go to costa rica i want you to go to to a local restaurant and i want you to i highly encourage you to talk to people around you ops hi there 